copper. And what was the other exception we have to be aware of? Chromium. Chromium and copper. And we talked about, yeah, there's some other exceptions, but those are the two that you're responsible for, copper and chromium. We didn't work through copper, we worked through chromium. So for review, let's go through first, remembering it's an exception. Russell, hit it. I want copper the long way. One is two, two is two, two P six, three is two, three P six, four S one, three D ten. Okay. Do we give him full credit? Yeah. yeah, he did a good job. And he took into account that it was an exception. I know people really know this stuff when they can say it faster than I can write it. So good job. Now, what if we wanted to do the short way? Bruce, tell me how to do the short way. Argon, 4S1, 3D10. Okay. And remember, it's only the noble gases that are allowed to be the shorthand part. So in brackets, that means that's the core or the center of it. And that takes care of the first 18. And while I'm thinking of it, in the back of your book, there's an appendix there. Let me see if I can spot it really easily. It's not in the best format. Let me switch over here. It's on page A6 in the back. So if you have your book, you might want to take a look. Because what I would recommend... Okay, this is not in the best format, but it is an excellent way to check your work. If you're doing electron configurations, that they have all the configurations now. Unfortunately, it's not 1S2, 2S2, and so forth. But if you'll look at how they've devised it, they have the elements here. You should be able to handle the first 50 the long way. And then... After that, I might still ask you, okay, let's go through the first first 50. SM, what is that stuff? S Tim, Tim, okay. Through the first 50 the long way. You see, you would have an opportunity to double check your work because they've got 1S, 2S, 2P, 3S, 3P. Now notice, I don't like this, but some people do this. They went in numerical order, not the filling order. So they put all the threes together, S, P, D, and then the four S, even though we know they don't fill in that order. But it is a way to check your work. And they tell you how many is in each of those locations. So you can check your work, and then they're also using the shorthand version, showing neon core, argon core, and so forth. So be able to do the first 50, the long way. I would sit down with a piece of paper and just do it. And then check your work either here or with somebody else. But past that, what else should you be able to do? I could ask you radium, the short way. Okay? And why I just want you to go through 50 is because as several of you have pointed out to me, once you hit about 57, there's some real weird stuff going on. So that's why I say through the first 50. Yeah, Bruce? Uh, on like 47 silver, I think that's part of that 11D family. Would that be considered the same as copper where you have to... Yeah, yeah it's the, an exception too. Okay. But as far as asking you an exception, I'll restrict myself to chromium okay. and copper. But that's a good point because they're family members. They're related. Okay, but long way. If I said do radium, then let's look over there. If I'm going to do radium there, Aaron, what's my core? If I do radium, who's the core? Are it radon? And so then you would say what to finish it off? Okay, 7S2. So some of those longer ones, higher ones, you can do if you do it the short way. And for instance, another kind of question. Okay, I have uranium. How many F electrons does it have in its outermost F field? And you would say? Three. three. Good. All right, now let's get back up to here. We just answered question one and two. Anybody have a question about that? Yeah, Bruce? Just a, like 91. What would 91's normal gas be? Uh, 
Oh, good question. Well, I looked right before. What do you think it would be? I'm right. assuming it would just be the radar. Radar. Mm -hmm. okay. That'll take care of 86. You just pick the closest one. And see, when you get up there to 102, 103, you're kind of out of luck. You still have to go back to 86, because okay. that was the last of our noble gases that are known or made. Okay, next, box diagram. Let me make some space here. Okay, now remember what you can do. In fact, somebody was in my office this morning. The box diagram is really an alternative to the electron configuration. It's just a visual rendition. And we usually don't go on the really big ones with the box diagram. But if you want some practice with it, what you might do is take a piece of paper and write it out blank, two of them, and make yourself a few copies. You can also save yourself some effort. There's no law. It's got to be an entire box. It can just be a line. So here's 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s. What comes next? 3p. Okay, there's 3p. And then we go to 4s because we fill out of order. And so our explanation for it filling out of order is that this 4s must be a tiny bit lower. And then we go up here to the 3d. And usually a box diagram is never past this point. Yeah, Britton? Um, for the noble gases, would you ask us, like, the short to do the short electron configuration, how... Well, that, that wouldn't be really working at all. That's right. What she said is, what about the noble gases? Would you have to do it short? Well, if I said argon, I don't want you to just put argon in brass. I was going to say, we have to go, go back, back, work, work you. To go back to any... The yeah, day. but they just, you know, they don't tend to do okay, that. So that's kind of confusing. Yeah. If you were, I suppose, technically, if your back's against the wall, and I said do argon with kind of, kind of a shortened version, Argon core, or pardon me, neon core, and go from there. But that's really not a good question. Not your good question, but that's not a good question for me to ask you. Okay, I want to do the electron configuration for copper. Okay, so I've got this junk drawn, and just go up, down, up, down, wherever, and let's run through it. Emily, can you do it for me? Now, actually, once we got done with that, it doesn't really matter mm -hmm. what order, okay? But I heard just a tiny bit of hesitancy in her voice. If she were following Hun's rule, Andrew, what would she have said just a tiny bit differently? Up, up, up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Because Hun's rule, you cut out across and go back, but once it's full, I mean, who knows that? Okay, onward. Hans rule just kicked in there. Okay. Okay, and there we are. Okay, very good. Now that shows it that this is in agreement with this, because here's your 4s1. Because we talked about if you can have a full D, hey, that is fantastic. Expend just a little bit of energy, promote one of these guys up into here, and you got a full D, and that's really, really stable. All right, that was the box diagram. Now, the next question that's frequently asked is how many unpaired electrons do you have? Now, if you're really slick, there's a couple of ways to do it. One, if you're really good at it, you look at the periodic table, and you can tell me how many unpaired. Or, if you're really pretty good, you can look at this and tell me how many are unpaired. And the unpaired are only going to come in sublevels that are not quite full. Okay, but the real visual for unpaired is the box diagram. And so that's one of the advantages to the box diagram. Andrew? If there were 3D4, would there only be uh, 4? And we wouldn't count okay. the, the box that's empty? All right, are you wanting to do chromium again, or you want to do... Oh, um, uh, yeah, uh, do, we do the, the TI. Okay, top titanium. titanium yeah. Okay, titanium, and I'm going to write this, and then I'm going to erase it. I'm doing titanium, just I'm filling in here and here only. This is 4S, 
So we go 4S2, and then Andrew, finish it off for me. The up, up? Yeah. And so, we, so it would just be two unpaired, That's right. it wouldn't be the whole plot. Mm, okay. there nobody there? Yeah, I'll just make sure. Yeah. Okay, let's get rid of typing. Okay, so well, the question is, and how many unpaired does this guy have And Allison, you're going to say? One. one. Right there. And since we have one unpaired, do we refer to that as paramagnetic or diamagnetic? Liz, what would you say? Carol.